Hello and welcome to this Affinity Photo tutorial with my second look at using the and I'm sorry if I mispronounce this but Veronoi filter um, and this is the end result of the first video which is why I was adding it to text and to the background and like I said in the first video I can't really see it any sort of really major uses for this particular filter but it, it can be just a bit of fun to sort of make this sort of mosaic effect now well, a couple of, sort of the restrictions that you have with this particular filter is that the lines that make up the mosaic are always sort of black or dark grey and you can't have there's no sort of no way within the filter to change that and also they're quite flat and bland there's no sort of real interest in there so I've been sort of tinkering to try and work a way around that and this is a cropped version of the bigger picture but in this I've changed the color of the lines and I've added like 3D effects to that to sort of help give a bit of a sort of texture and feeling to the, the the overall image I've just used it on a sort of plain image at the moment in this particular image so but you know it just you can still see it as a normal picture in the background if you wanted to keep the actual filter effect and alter those lines you still can do that it just has to do it a slightly different way so I'm going to show you how I got to this result and let me just shut these down and we will start with this image which I I made quite some time ago for, I think for a previous tutorial I think the original picture was of this flower which I got from Pixabay and I just sort of copied it and we put it in the background and blurred it to give the sort of double image but this is quite good in the sense it gives me a way of showing you what it would look like if you blurred the picture and then added the filter or if you keep the filter uh, the image very crisp and clear and then add the fi uh, filter to it so let's just start by adding a new layer now you can do this one or two ways, you can either use the rectangle tool and draw out a rectangle that is the size of the image that you want to add this to um, making sure that the colour of the rectangle you draw out is white or you can just add a new layer by clicking on this icon in the layers panel so it will add a blank pixel layer and then we just need to fill this with white so I'll get the flood fill tool click on that white is the color and then just make that white it does not really need to be white for this to work um, and you will see why in a bit later let me come off the flood fill tool so what we're going to do now is add the Verono Veroni filter to it so we come out to filters colors down to the filter and so we have all these black lines on not the white background because it's only going on to this layer and then it's a case of you know finding the size that you want I'm going to make these cell sizes slightly bigger Let's have it about there and then click apply now to get like the 3d effects and whatever that what I'm looking for we'd use the effects panel but at the moment because all of this be it the white or the black are pixels it will affect the whole image as it stands so we need to get rid of the white and to do that we come back up to filters again to the colors menu 
and down to erase white paper. So that will now just leave you with the black lines. So now we can add the effects and it will only affect the black lines because that is all there is there. So if I click on this FX icon it will bring up the layer effects panel and the first thing we want to do is to change the color. Now we've got color overlay as one of the options so I've put a tick in that and click on the word color overlay to get the options for this particular um, effect. Now at the moment the color is set to black. So if I click on this you can uh, get the color chooser. You don't have to, I mean I've got mine set on RGB sliders but you you can use like a color wheel which some people prefer. Um, and if you like black just leave it black or if you want to go for you know a slightly grey color or red or whatever color. I've, I mean if you're going for sort of like a wood color which might be a good effect you might want to go for a sort of a brown See, and another sort of good reason for doing this, because if I bring this back to black, and just move this out of the way, in this particular image it's not too bad, but if you had some really dark areas, like up here, the black lines will get lost a bit. Similarly, if you do change the colour to a light colour, the light areas might get lost. So it's a case of finding a colour that works well with what you're trying to achieve, and also works well with the dark or light colors within your image. So let me let me come back to making this a brown color, and um, go for a sort of middly shaded, so it's pretty even in the light and the dark areas. So I have my color set, so now I want to add a 3D effect to that. So put a tick next to 3D, click on the word 3D to get the effect. And then it's just a case of making adjustments however you see fit. You can change the direction of the lighting to again get it to look how you want. Make it I mean, you could spend all day making little minor adjustments to get that right. And then I'm also going to add a little bit of inner shadow. So again, put a tick next to inner shadow. And then I'll just tinker around with these until I get a look that I like. Let's see, I'll make may have to not use this so much on this. Let me zoom in a sec and see what that looks like. Yeah, it's not having too much effect. It's only really affecting this area up here. So on this particular colour it hasn't worked as well, the inner shadow, so I'll just take that off and sort of leave that particular version as it stands I can close that and let me bring this back to full size so there you have the lines now changed colour and I've given a 3D effect to get a much more interesting look now like I said before the background Yours, if you, depending on the picture you use, it might be crisp and in focus like this flower, or you could blur it using the Gaussian blur and get a sort of a much blurred image in the background, um, depending on what you want to do with your particular image. Um, so, an easier way to do that would be to again highlight the bottom layer and then come up to filter, blur, 
Gaussian blur and then it's just a case of blurring that to however you want it do something like that so you have that option to blur the background and have sort of crisp lines at the front that are nice and colourful so let me just close that down and then I will open it again and this time I'm going to sort of keep the Veronio effect on the background and have it on the lines as well so we will again add the new layer be it by adding the layer like I'm doing and flood filling it with white or you can just draw out a rectangle to fill the area and then we will just hide that a second and then highlight the original image and use the filter on the image now I'm doing it the image first because this is sort of you need to have a sort of smaller cell size to keep this sort of mosaic effect and still have an idea of what that image is meant to be looking like so that you can still see that, that they are flowers having reduced that cell size and I'll keep should I keep the line width I'll make it slightly bigger the line width so I will click apply then I will turn this layer back on use that filter again which is colors and down to and it will remember the settings for the last time this filter filter was used so I won't alter any of those settings I will just apply it and then like before filters color erase white paper so we now got what looks like a, a, a normal Veronio filter effect on that image but I can now change the color lines by again adding the effects color overlay select the overlay to change the color and let's go for uh, well, I was going to go for yellow but it looks horrendous um, so again I think personally my personal taste is that it looks quite good in a sort of brown just for this particular image but I, I was going to try and oh let's try red it's just just for the devilment of it and again add 3D effect to just to give this a, a not so flat looking image there we go and if I zoom in hopefully we can see this has got sort of a, the 3D effect is helping bring out those red lines so basically that is it it's just a way of changing the lines of the filter and giving some effects to them if needed and you can just do it above a normal image and then maybe blur it if you need to or use the filter on the background image and also on the white layer that you put above it so it's just a way of adding something to the filter that is probably should have really been in there from the beginning a way of changing the color of those lines because not everybody will want black lines all the time but like I said it's just a bit of fun so have fun trying it out so thank you for watching and goodbye